a pretty good view of the inside of my Infinity DJ console. I want to go through this piece by piece to tell you what I have in here, why I chose it, and a baseline price of what I paid. We're going to start in the center right here, taking a look at my microphones. So I have two Electrovoice RE3 UHF wireless mics, and they retail for about $600 a piece. Now the Infinity DJ console has space for a 1U rack, and that's where I decided to mount these. And I love them because they have easy to read LCD displays right on the front, frequency scanning for selecting open frequencies, and a wide selection of tuning bandwidths. These have been fantastic. This brings me to my next two pieces right here. My RE3 mics are connected to an RE3 passive antenna splitter kit that splits two antenna signals into two diversity receivers and also functions as a combiner for sending two transmitter signals to one antenna. I got this kit from NLFX for about $139 and it was really easy to patch in. And I'll give you a quick look at what it looks like on the back side of this unit with everything connected. The antenna splitters are run real nice to the front of the booth. Right here at the top, we have the incoming antenna signal, both A and B. So this wire right here comes right out of the splitter, comes to the front of the booth, and is run along the bottom using these wire management holes all the way to the corner. There's an additional hole right down here so that I can run it inside the cubby and then connect it directly to the antenna. Now, obviously having my RE3 mics rack mounted inside the booth, you can't put the antennas traditionally where they would go. Now, prior to getting an additional wire kit from NLFX to move my antennas to the front of the booth in the top corners, I had the antennas coming out the back right in front of me. Now, I didn't have any dropouts, reception was fine, but the position was a little annoying and I did eventually want to move the antennas in a better location. And that's by having clear line of sight and being up high and in a good position. So I wanted to get them out from behind the booth and get them up towards the front of the booth. And that's where I eventually ended up getting the Max Cable Pack also from NLFX. Now I'll show you a picture of that right now so you can see what comes inside the kit. It's gonna give you everything you need to kind of get this up and running as quick as possible. And it came with the uh, antenna kit to get the antennas to the front of the booth. Since I showed you how to run the cables, I figured I would show you the mount itself. Now this is the RE3 antenna. Unfortunately, it is pretty large, but it is what it is. So this is the mount kit that comes in the Max Cable Kit that I got from NLFX. Now Danny has pre-drilled a hole in the booth, so if you want to mount an antenna, you can, just by simply pushing out the white plug. All you have to do is just take your thumb, press pretty firmly, and it's gonna pop right out. Now this antenna mount attached really easy with just a couple of screws that I could use a screwdriver and just make them hand tight. It was not hard at all to screw into this material. They mounted really easy. Now to remove the antenna, pretty self-explanatory, just simply give it a twist to unlock it. And this is what the mount itself looks like. And then to attach your antenna, place it, and then just give it a little turn and then now the antenna is fixed to the booth. Definitely a quick release option. They go on in just seconds. These two power blocks are for my RE3 mic units that just run right along the side of the unit and everything is kind of bunched up and secured on top of this ape coin. Before moving on, I just wanted to point out these loose wires hanging over the back of the booth in case you were wondering what that was all about. I obviously had to take my Roland 707M out of this console in order to show you what was installed underneath the controller. So when it's time to reinstall the controller, I will show you where everything goes and how those connect. Continuing right to left in the booth, now we're gonna take a look at my powered USB hub. I got this off of Amazon, I think it was around $70. It is a 10 port powered 3.0 USB hub with a 48 watt power adapter. I highly recommend always getting a powered USB hub. You don't wanna stress out your laptop. And this connects 
right to my power base over here in the corner, utilizing the wire management back here. Here I have my two ape coins. I obviously have an extender to power this ape coin here that stays permanently in the booth. I don't have to take this in and out every time. So this powers the ape coins. This powers the actual unit right here. This goes in through this hole here and will connect to my Asus laptop. This is for my main hard drive and this is for a spare hard drive. And then in the back here, this is what connects to my Roland 707M. And I had to get uh, angled cables to have clearance between the controller and the back of the booth. So I highly recommend any cables for this booth. Definitely get angled ones to save on, you know, some space. Moving right along, power block for the USB hub. These are power cords for my dual laptop setup. This is for my main laptop, which goes on the right-hand side. This is my Asus ROG, and this is my backup laptop. I have a Razer GeForce 1060 Max-Q. Now, I fully believe in having multiple power cords for devices, especially laptops. And I didn't wanna to have to be bothered with taking these in and out if I wanted to use the laptop outside of the booth. So I went on eBay, found the appropriate power cord for each laptop. The Asus one I think was 40 bucks. And for whatever reason, this Razer one was like 60 bucks. I have the power cords positioned so each one runs to the appropriate side. So my Asus will run right into this cubby over here. So when I go to connect my laptop, I just remove this panel and then can pull out my power cord right here, run it up to the laptop tray, plug it in and be done. So very quick access to my power source. And obviously the Razer will go to the left cubby. Now I decided to mount these to the booth like this is because I wanted quick access to swap them out, obviously, if something went wrong. I can simply pull it off the side and swap it out for a new power cord. I didn't wanna to have to dismantle my whole booth to get to things. So I figured the quick access point would be right here on this panel. Now the logical next question would be, is how is she sticking all of this stuff to the booth? You can use quality double-sided Velcro, but I found something different that I think is amazing. So this is a clear tape that I found on Amazon. It was $10 for the roll. Let's see if you could see this here. It has double-sided stickiness, but it's very rubbery and also offers like a shock cushioning. I really can't explain it. It's kind of bizarre. It's like alien tape. All I can tell you is a little goes a long way, folks. And I have made the mistake of putting a whole entire line along everything that I wanted to stick to the booth. And I had a hell of a time getting it off. So literally this go around, all I did was take a pair of scissors. I cut off maybe a piece like that big. And then I just stuck one on each end and that's enough to keep this stuff solid. When I tell you this stuff is no joke, I am not kidding. And this is like my Frank's Red Hot. What is that phrase? I put that on everything. So other than the rack mounted mic, this is stuck down with it. All of these are stuck down with it. My power base is stuck down with it. These were stuck down with it. Look, you can see it right there. Works really good. So double-sided Velcro, or you can get some of this uh, pretty snazzy clear alien tape from Amazon. Over here, all the way on the left, this is probably the messiest part of the booth, but this is where the magic happens. This is my main power source. So right here, this is the power cord for the Roland 707M. And this right here, we're looking at the Diderio power base. This is a tour grade power base that I got from NLFX for $30. Now I know it looks pretty underwhelming, but it is a well-featured surge protector and power conditioner. This does have some filtering in it. Now Ben did a great video on the Diderio power base. I will put the link to his video in the description of this one. So if you wanna learn more about this product and actually see how well it works, you can do that. 
But in general, it's small. As you can see, real estate is at a premium in this booth and I needed something that would kind of just tuck away in the corner. It has a robust metal housing, 14 gauge wire, which I have coiled up over here. And then I just simply drop the tail down through the leg and connect that to my main power source. Right here is where I have a nifty charging splitter. So I could pretty much charge anything that I need from my phone to my USB power packs, anything at all. I got a multi-plug right here that is connected to my power base so I can charge anything at any time. So this is pretty awesome. There are a lot of great options out there, a lot of great power conditioners. This just happened to fit my needs and was the perfect size. Also as a side note, to get this to fit as good as it did, I had to remove the rubber feet and the wire management thing that's built on the power base. I took all that off. It was a couple screws so that I can make this as small as possible. So I did take that off, but other than that modification, it just plopped right on in the booth. Looking at my side cubbies. So in here, I have the USB connection from the Roland to my second laptop, which will come up here. When the laptop is connected, that's what this little notch is for, is for the wires to run up nice and easy. I obviously have my power source for the laptop on this side, and then this cord right here connects to my iPad. Now I use this as a backup. I have all the important music on my iPad, as well as DJ Pro with Beat Source linked up. So if in theory I had to DJ from my iPad, I could do that with this cord. So now I think I'm at a point where I can actually put my controller back in and kind of show you what all these extra wires go to and things like that. So let's get my controller put back in the booth. All right, let's get some of this stuff connected back to the Roland. So first let's start with power. Here I have laptops A and B, each running to each side of the booth where the laptops will sit. We have A, we have B, and now you can see why I got these angled cables to really give me some extra buffer room with clearance. Next, I'm gonna take care of my audio wires. I have two 18 inch NLFX XLR extensions, and this comes in the Max Wire Kit. This is designed to come from the master out and then drop a few inches down into the leg. And you can see that kind of here. I don't want to pull it out because it's going to be too much of a pain to fish it back under the controller. But essentially this is acting as an extension so that you can connect your XLR from your speaker in the leg of this booth without having to run it up underneath. NLFX always puts the length of the cable right on the jacket of their XLR. So these plug right in here to master out and again, I'm gonna stress you're gonna want angled cables to give you that added clearance. Next, I'm gonna take care of my microphones. I'm gonna connect one and two like so. And last but not least, I am now going to connect my accessories. So I have designated my iPad to come out of channel three. So I'm gonna plug that right in here. So let's just say, the uh, laptop dies, you know, you have it on PC so I can do four channels, but if I want to quickly uh, move it on over to my iPad, I just move it to line and then now turn the volume up and I can play off my iPad. So I'm going to make this four. So I'm going to plug that right in here. I can move that to the line, simply move up the fader and now I can use my phone as a backup as well. So this is all my backup accessories that if again, something happened with the two laptops or I needed a quick connect, I have USB-C, lightning and auxiliary. Coming full circle. So here everything is connected. It runs through this hole into the cubby. And then I have my quick connects right here that we just discussed. 
finishing up the tour here you can see how nice and neat everything is on the inside i actually have a lot of space left right here here's our optional headphone holder now this is what i think i'm most excited to show you guys is these cases right here i got these off of amazon i think they were 15 dollars each and it's actually an exterior business card holder and i was trying to find a solution where to keep my business cards i didn't want to keep it in this cupboard anymore because I had to dig through that pouch to get to them and they were getting bent and stuff like that so I came up with this idea it has a self-closing lid and it's actually pretty tight I'm using the dead space underneath my Roland and between my RE3 mics so if someone needs a business card I can just simply kind of grab hand it on over and then over here I put in a couple batteries in case I had to swap out a battery real quick uh, my microphones are battery hogs and I like to have fresh you know batteries every other gig or something like that so I didn't have to dig for them but you can put gum mints in here anything you want it's like a little uh, cubby storage and it just stays permanently in the booth it had 3m tape on the bottom so I just pushed it in stuck it down and I thought these were pretty awesome. So I'll put the link for these in the video description as well. And last, I have an additional mic cable on its way so I can utilize the front of the Roland. And this is why they call this the Swiss Army knife of controllers. The inputs on this thing are amazing. So I can have two additional mic inputs if needed or use them as a stereo input, as you can see here, as an aux in. So I always typically keep this on the mic because it's always good to have wireless mics, but in the event something goes wrong, you gotta have one of these on you. So I'm gonna keep this in the cubby right over here. Always have a wired mic. I can have this ready to go, really convenient. These things are tanks. If you do not have a Shure SM58, um, you gotta get one. This is obviously seen <laughs> a lot of DJ life. It has the classic uh, dent at the top, but these things are pretty much indestructible. Mm -hmm.